All right guys, good morning, how's it going? So today, we're gonna be working on the engine. And mostly what we're gonna be working on here today, pretty much this entire video, is going to be how to measure your buckets. We're gonna be checking that, we're gonna be checking lash, and then we're gonna be ordering shimless buckets. Now, today we're just gonna be going how to install these, putting your cams in and stuff. I'm gonna set up the camera over here, I got the tripod, but I'm gonna show you guys pretty much how to set this up. I did a video on this, but I didn't do the best job. This time around, I'm gonna go over this in great detail, and I'm also going to go over every nitty gritty details from the tools you'll need, and just kind of, you know, the, the giant gist of how to do this. So let's start, and let's take it everything we got. So first and foremost, guys, here are our buckets. If we come over to the head, this is a brand new head. Um, this might be a little bit different for the fact that you guys already have buckets. I sold my old used head with the buckets, everything, um, sold it all, so I don't have my old buckets. So I borrowed these from my buddy Tony over at Stan Stacker Media. This is the actual setup we took out of his car to go to shimless buckets, so these are shim buckets. Now, I had labeled this, and this is what I always do. I take these plastic containers from Harbor Freight, and when I take them apart, I use these because it's perfect. It fits exactly 24 uh, buckets in it, or valves, springs, whatever you want to do, it works perfect. The valves don't really work in here, so when I, if I have to do valves too, like I'm taking a head apart and I need to put those pieces back in, what I do is one and one. So one's intake, one's exhaust. I remove these little dividers here, and that's what's cool about it. Remove one of the dividers so the valve can sit in here, but I keep everything together. So one would be intake, one would be exhaust. In this case, you can fit both into one box. So what I'm going to do is measure these buckets. To do that, I've got my caliper here. This is what I'm going to use to actually measure these, and I'll show you where you need to measure from. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna measure from the start or after the fact, because really what you need to do is put all the buckets in. We have to install the cams, take these cam caps off, install the cams, torque these down to the right setting, and then check the shims on it. So you see where it's at, see what the tolerance is. And then we have to follow the Brian Crower cam card. These are Brian Crower 276 cams. Um, my, oops, my engine builder went ahead and checked everything. He said, it looks pretty good. He's like, but just double check it once you get it on. So I'm gonna check the tolerances. What's pretty cool now is they actually include the cam shield, which is just assembly lube. I have a ton of it here, but I think that's pretty cool. They actually include it now. I'm gonna actually use it just because they do include it. It also comes with the instructions and your clearances. Let's do this. Take it out of the bag. Sit that there. And then we have our cam tolerances here. So let's do this, open it up. Uh, I think it used to be 10 and 8 thou on my 272s. I'm not sure what it is for this. It's the same. So here's your intake and exhaust. And you'll come down here to valve clearance. Ideal, and this is both saying when cold, on your intake side is 8 thou, which is 0 0.008. On your exhaust side is 10 thou, which is 0 0.10. And that's what you're gonna do. Uh, we're going to take a little shim and put it underneath the cam and then the clearance of the bucket on the back side of the cam. Again, I'll show you guys this a little bit more in detail once I set up the camera here and I'll get a good angle of everything because I want to make sure you guys can see everything crisp and clear. So again, these are for the BC 276 cams. My 272s were the same clearances um, and I want to get these dead on. So 99, I'm like 99% sure this is going to be all off drastically, which doesn't matter because I'm buying shimless buckets. But I'm going to use this and then base the math and show you guys how to do the math to get where you need to be at. Uh, I also have my Toyota book up there and showing the different type of valves that we can order or different uh, buckets, I should say, not valves. I correct myself there. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna start taking these caps off. These caps also come off in order. So they're actually numbered if you look here. So I've had people say like, how do I know? So if you look here, we'll face this way because it's the way it's numbered. See how it says E1, exhaust one. E2, let's see if you get focus. E2, exhaust two. Come on, focus, baby, come on. E3, and then so on and so forth. And then the intake side is I1234560, etc. Right? Already stamped, ready to go. Those must stay in those spots, period. You cannot take them out. They have to go back in that exact same spot. I repeat, must go back. Uh, makes it easy though, because you know they're numbered. Uh, obviously, if this is number one, it can only fit there. The rest can be mismatched, but if I got one here, that means it goes up to seven here. Uh, same on this side. If you got one here, it goes up to seven here. So it goes in order one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Super simple, just want to reiterate that. I'm gonna shut up now though, set up the camera, take these caps off just so you guys can see me do it. And um, yes, yeah, line them up over there on the table. So guys, there's no real rhyme or reason to this. I could actually use an impact, but I just not a big fan of that. So just gonna, what I'm gonna do is actually loosen them all up and I'll take them all off at once. Again, I know I could probably use an impact in this. I just, when I'm doing something like this that I don't wanna have to open up anytime soon, I just don't like taking the risk factor there. So again, I'll shut up and uh, Speed this up, time lapse it.
So what I ended up doing, I kind of contradicted myself there a little bit. So what I ended up doing was breaking them all loose by hand just so I could feel that and then just use my little ratchet there, which has no real torque to it. I just pull those out. So now I'm gonna take these all off and line them up over here on the table because I don't really need those yet. I just need to start flipping buckets in because I still haven't decided where I wanna go ahead and put the buckets in now and then as I take them out, measure them. I haven't decided what I wanna do here because um, I am gonna have to lube this all up to make sure to install this properly and spin everything around. So I'm just not sure how I wanna go about this yet. So yeah, and then I'm gonna have to order some shimless buckets and go from there. So let's go ahead and start taking these caps out. So big shout out to my buddy, Tony over at Sandstagger Media again. He let me use his factory buckets. This was off his original 1998 motor with about 35,000 miles on it or so. Uh, these are what I'm gonna go ahead and do and I'm going to measure these. So I'm starting with the intake side. So the intake starts here, these ones up. Went ahead and started numbering them and I'm gonna show you guys how to do this still though. This is what I usually do, piece of paper. You can use your phone, but in my opinion, this is dirty. I'd rather have a piece of paper than touch my phone. And it's also just something easier to reference and keep touching your phone. So one down through 12, you can see here, I've got my, oops, see if I can get a little closer here. There you go, sorry about that guys. Um, one through 12 and I start measuring. They're all over the place, but that doesn't really matter now. We need to know after the fact, like how tight the tolerances are. Uh, but I'm just going to have these. So when I do do it, I'm like, okay, if it's this, I need this bucket, right? Depending to say if I have something that's too tight, right? I need to get a thinner bucket um, when I order shimless buckets or I have something that has not enough material, I need to get a bigger bucket, so on and so forth. So I'm just writing this down ahead of time. I'm gonna do the exhaust next. Um, so it just makes it really, really easy. You will need one of these calipers like this, if you can see this here. This is a nice digital one. This is something my dad used in doing machining. So this is probably overkill and then some. You can get one from Harbor Freight and that'll be accurate enough. This one is insanely accurate as you guys can see here. Um, it just had it recalibrated too. So this is what we use when we're doing CNC work. So again, a little bit above me on what you probably need. Um, but that being said, what I'm gonna do is close this here. And on the front of this, or on the top of it here, it's numbered. My exhaust side number one. I'm gonna take my bucket out. So this guy right here, I'm gonna slide it in here. So what I'm gonna do is open this up some, I'll slide that in, so you guys can see it there. So there's a bucket. And what I'm gonna do now is spin this down. Spin this down, spin this down. Down, down, down. Let's down, down, down. I don't even know the name of that song, but I love it. So there. So right now, and that's, we're going to the 10,000th mark. If you notice that too, so you only really need to go to the thou mark, which is the third decimal point over. I'm going to the 10 thou mark just because I don't know why, I have no need for it. But you only need to go to the thou mark. Again, that's the third one over. So two, one, three here. The third one is your thou mark, thousandths, I should say. Again, used to the machining world. Um, so if we look at this here, if you guys can see it, this bucket here, which is number one for exhaust, comes out. And again, these were random, so don't think of this was on his engine. This was, he just put them all in here, so I gotta figure out where I wanna place them out, depending. Um, we got 210, zero, or, um, 210,000, or 2.2107. God, I can't talk here to guys, I deeply apologize. Uh, but we're only gonna go out to the 10th thou, the 10 thou mark. So we're gonna write down 0 0.2107 on this for the number one for my exhaust here. So this will go at the number one spot, it will be 0 0.210, wow, it just moved a little bit, 106. Again, that's how touchy it is when you get to the 10 thou mark. So that's why it's really not necessary, but I'm just doing it. You only need to go out to the thou mark. Now I'm gonna repeat this process. Now this is a shimmed bucket, this is not shimless. And there is some discrepancy in this. So technically, what you can do is take the shim out and measure the shim and then measure this bucket. I measure both together, make sure they're clean in between because if there's too much oil grease build up in there, this won't measure properly. If they're all within pretty darn close spec, then you realize that they're not that far off. But you get something that's wild, then you need to take a look again. When you do it here, you can see it's going to the center of that bucket and then on the inside is where it is where it gets tricky there's like a little piece in here actually let me show you one without it let me set this one down show you the number two one here so if you guys can see that see that little piece right there it's like a hardened piece of steel that's what they use to make sure that these don't wear out over time so on and so forth but you're measuring off that make sure your caliper is hitting that as darn close to center as possible then obviously it'll line up on top here but that's what you need to make sure you're measuring off of if not you won't get an accurate reading so now again, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna write that down. So what was it? Let's just play with it here. I'm gonna take it back off, back it back on real quick. Again, this is a true caliper, so let's get that close. There we go, come on. Uh, again, I even wiped off all the oil and grease as much as I could and it's still a bit greasy. So 
let's do this here, 0 0.2103. And that'll be my first exhaust bucket. Now I'm just gonna repeat that process. I'm not gonna show you that, but I just wanted to show you guys how to go about it. Again, these little calipers, I forget how to say this name properly, but there's a real Japanese company. Um, comes with a little card too. Again, I just had this recalibrated. Nice piece. You can, again, get one from Harbor Freight. Not a, not a problem. But I, if you just want to splurge, buy one of these. This is very nice to have. Digital too. Let's put it back down. And it is very, very accurate. Put it down. And you can see here it's not the zero mark yet. If I force it, I can get it damn close. If I put my finger, I can go past it too. It'll tell you. Oh, you went past it. So it knows when you try to overthrow it too. It's pretty amazing. Uh, nice little piece. So, again, I'm going to go ahead and shut up now. I'm going to do the rest of my exhaust buckets, and then we're going to start placing me inside the engine, and then I'm going to show you guys how to install the cams, and so on and so forth. So, let's continue. Okay, guys. So, what we're doing next here is installing the buckets. It's the easy part, right? Just got to drop them in. Uh, do them in the order, especially because I uh, measure them ahead of time. If you don't measure them ahead of time, you don't need to do this. You can do it after the fact. I just want to do it ahead of time because i got time right now to do it. Um, and I have that fancy little case that helps me stay organized. So, intake side first. Uh, just kind of go over the head. This is a built head by Tom over at IEG Performance. They don't really do engine builds for 2J. Tom works on the side there, uh, made that fancy little plate, which you saw in the past. This is a basic head, very just basic ported head, not, nothing crazy. It's streetcar stock size valves. They are stainless steel BC valves. Uh, this is BC's dual spring kit, uh, along with the titanium retainers. Very, very basic setup. Uh, a little bit of shimming was done too to bring up the pressure on the springs to meet Tom's standards to make sure we had enough spring pressure so we don't have any valve flow. Um, he also machined the head here too to make room for the 276 cams. Technically, BC says you don't need to, but it gets really close and you're wiping off all the oil, which you don't want to do. So Tom went ahead and machined the head just to be safe. And he said, just in case I want to change cams out one day, you know, it gives you more clearance for another cam. So it's one of those things, do it now so you don't have to do it later. Uh, but I'm going to shut up. I'm going to start installing all the buckets now. This will be my number one. This will be my number 12. Same thing on the exhaust side. Number one, number 12. So let's go ahead and drop these in. So again, guys, this is my number one up here for my intake. So go like this. See how well these want to go into. This all depends too. Sometimes it can be a little finicky. And I've got them oiled up now too. There's one. And again, I'm going to shut up here shortly because to do this is just annoying. And then I've got a neat little trick to get them all out, which actually is not really a trick. It's really easy. This is the one thing it's nice to do when you have the engine out. Sorry, my arm's kind of in the way too. So let's move that back some because I can get so close. That's why I even took, you see, I took the intake manifold off. I want to be as close as possible, not hit it, scratch it, have any possible issues. Because who wants, who wants to make a job harder? You don't have to. All right, so next thing I'm gonna do, guys, is I'm gonna put a bit of this cam lube, or this cam shield that um, BC includes. I have, this is what I usually use. Hold on here. Look at that. So, here's some essential. I've been using this, this, I have this original, I probably should just replace this because it's old now. It probably does have an expiration date. But I used this in my first engine build back in 2013. So, but this is all I ever use. Um, I see you guys use the red stuff all the time, but this is what this Molly Graphite assembly lube, this is what I always use. I don't see why there'd be any issue with it, but yeah, I've had this for almost, I guess, nine, 10 years now. Probably just buy a new one. So we're gonna use this one today because it's fresh. Don't know if this goes bad and I'm probably just gonna replace it now talking about it. So let's go ahead and use this. Put it up on the bearing areas here just so it has something to sit on when I place the cams in. And then I'm gonna explain to you guys after I put this on, setting the cam on, kind of get it leveled out to the best of your abilities, putting the cam caps on, and explaining why you need to be so gentle when tightening these down, especially something as aggressive as a 276 cam from BC. This has a very, it's a very, very high lift cam, and you can cause some serious issues, and that's why I want to record this too, because God forbid I have a catastrophic failure, and I want it to be shown on camera. So, again, I'm being kind of gentle with it, honestly, as, um... I'm gonna need to put this on the cam caps also. Uh, but no need to be gentle. You just wanna make sure it's on there so there's no issues. 
Um, again, once it's pressed in, I've seen guys like, oh, just layer in thick. Well, I mean, it's gonna get pressed out, so why bother? Uh, as long as it's fully on there and it has something lubricated against it, that's all it that really matters. So that, at least that's been my thought process forever. I just wanna make sure this is done right. Um, again, I got a video that I did years ago, guys, which you can go back and check if you like. Uh, setting up my 272 cams. I just figured I'd do a new one, new, new camera, new technology, new date stamp, meh, why not? Now I'm gonna put this all in and then I gotta do the cam caps also, but I'm not gonna do those until I need to. There we go. Again, it's one of those things like, you can go overboard, but uh, once you get so thick and it's on there so much, you know, it's not really doing anything anyhow, so meh. All right, so that's on there. Now let's take out the big boys. Let's take out these 276 cams. They are, there is an intake and there is an exhaust. So let me explain that too. So here's the first cam, I gotta open it up. I believe this is the intake cam because I think that's what the box is in, but when you take it out, there's actually a number on it to tell you so you don't just go off the box. There's a physical number you can look at to tell you which one you have. So you take it out of the sleeve, that part, take it off the first sleeve, then you take it out of the second sleeve. So let's go ahead. Once we get past a certain part, it gets really easy. So grab the end of it here, bloop, hold it, pull the bag off. Now, there is markings on this bad girl. Where is it at? I can't remember at the very end. So I was wrong, so look. It is the exhaust one. So see if I can get it to focus here. See if you guys can see it. See how it says EX for exhaust? Um, if you're asking me which way needs to go in, well, there's only really one way. Um, one side is drilled out, has your centering pin for your cam gear, and then has the threads for your actual bolt itself. So that's the side that needs to go up. The back side will have your part number on it, which is this is a BC03304 in your exhaust cam, so it goes on this side. Again, I'm just gonna set this down right now. So nothing more than that, guys. So just let me set this on there. Not a good spot. Like there's just no, no good spot for these cams right there. Okay, and before we tighten them down too, I'm gonna change a couple other things. So don't worry, there's something else I'm gonna show you. I'm just sending the cams on because there's something else I need to show you before we start this entire process. Before you put the caps on, before you do anything else, there's another thing we have to do. But right now this won't hurt if I send the cam here because there's nothing touching it, right? There's nothing pressing down that could possibly hit a valve. I'll show you something here in just a moment. Okay, so this one is our intake cam, so slide that off again. Take that one off. Again, pull down on the plastic. Pull, pull, pull. To get the end, and then slide off the rest. Just like before. So let's see here, on the back side here, you see it says intake. See if you guys can get that to focus. Come on camera, focus for me, baby. I don't know why it won't, but this is the intake cam. This is the BC, BC0304 intake side. I don't know why it's not focusing, uh, but again, just sit that bad girl down in there. It's just, there's no good way of getting it sitting in there nice, nice. But now, those are, before we do anything else, I need to take out, I had spark plugs in here just to keep everything kind of tightened up. I'm gonna take out this first spark plug and then I'm gonna get a screwdriver and I'm gonna show you why. I'm gonna put something soft in that screwdriver because of these top of these pistons are coated too. If you got factory pistons, I'm gonna be honest, I wouldn't really give a shit. Uh, but for this, we're gonna take out the first spark plug, remove it, and I'm gonna use a screwdriver to demonstrate how we're gonna get the TDC and then back it down from TDC slightly so you don't bend the valve. I forget, there was a YouTube channel guy, I guess apparently did that and screwed everything up. Don't make that mistake. I, my video years ago even showed you this too. So if you need to, if you're already in a rush or you wanna look at another one that's based on the 272 BC cams, this will be BC 276. There's no real difference in how you check all this. But if that makes you happy, check that video. But I explain it, you have to do this. So let me take this spark plug out and I'm gonna show you guys, you know, this trick per se. Okay guys. <clears throat> All right guys, so what you wanna do is remove the spark plugs if you have any in there. Uh, in my case, I had some in there just to keep everything sealed up. Remove all of them, and again, you have to remove all of them because it creates a pressurized system because since all the valves are up, it creates a pressurized system, so you have to remove all of them. Um, what you're gonna need to, screwdriver like this, 
nice long guy. I put some blue painters tape, I wrapped it around three times around the tip end of it here. For my case, it's just because they got that brand new coating, I'm gonna stick it down on the number one cylinder here, and I think that's pretty damn close to TDC right now. You're then gonna grab a socket and a ratchet. This is a 22 millimeter, and you're gonna put the crank bolt in. What you're gonna do is, you're gonna turn the crank till you see this little guy here, I'm gonna hold it gently. I'm not gonna hold it tight, but hold it gently to see it go up and down. I wanna see the number one piston to get to TDC, and when I notice it's a TDC, I'm going to then back it down or rotate a little bit more to get it down past that, because when we're doing this, I don't want those valves hitting the top of those pistons. So you get the TDC and then bring it down slightly. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. You can bring it down a lot, it's up to you, but just bring it down slightly so you don't have that problem. So again, I'm on the crank right now. Let's keep spinning this. Now it is going down. Um, so let's do this. Okay, see it went back up there. So gently go up. I can see it's right now it's a TDC. So see how high it's sitting guys? Right now it's a TDC. I'm gonna spin a little bit more. Wait for it. I'm just gonna start coming back down. There we go. Now it's a TDC, or now it's not a TDC, I should say. We got our TDC, brought it back down from that, and that protects us from messing up the valves now. So brought that down. Now what we're gonna do is put the cam caps on. Again, we need to put that molly lube on that before we put the caps on, and then we're gonna torque this down. There's a torque setting. I gotta look it back up in the book. Can't remember off the top of my head. I'll tell you guys the torque setting to put those bolts to because that's pertinent too, but if this isn't torqued down properly, uh, that's a big issue. Also, when you're doing this, 100% can do it by hand. Now I used earlier, like once I broke the bolts loose, I'm like, ah, I'll start taking them out. No, cannot do that. No, 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 no. This must be 100% done by hand. You need to be able to feel when you're cranking this down. They say like start from the center out. The cams are uneven. There's just no really way to do it. You just keep checking the bolts that you see are getting tight and then go to the loose ones and then making sure it's get, uh, tightened down properly. If you do not do that, you have the chance of cracking a cam. I've seen it happen. Guys will start on the high end and just start wrenching it down. Well, it's the cast cam. It will crack. If you guys watch Whistling Diesel's video, do not fucking follow that junk ass video. It's terrible advice. Don't do it. I think his videos are awesome. I love that he destroys vehicles. I think it's cool. I actually really enjoy that. But don't listen to him for real advice. Just watch him for entertainment. Don't follow the whole GSC cam BS stuff. Just do this properly and you won't have a problem. Cams are always been cast except for GSC and no one has problems. Just don't follow that. So I'm gonna shut up now. Let's put the cam caps on. Um, these already have oil on them. So I'm gonna place them all on and then we're gonna slowly tighten these down. Once we get them to like hand tight, then I'm gonna actually torque each one down and then we're gonna check for clearances. So let me shut up now. So just going ahead and place these exhaust cam side on first. See how high that is right now? Good Lord have mercy. Again, I'm just putting some molly lube on this and just placing them around. I'm gonna have to play with the cam a little bit more, get it on there a little bit better. But this is the problem. You go to big boy cams, you get big boy problems. Um, I have to play with it a little bit here. Gotta get some more lube here, hold on one second. But So we're gonna start with the intake cam here. And you can see it's kinda up, kinda down, right? Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tighten this down. You're gonna start and just kinda work your way down. I can see what my high one, my most stress point is gonna be here because the lobes are pointing down. No matter what, you're gonna have something pressing down. You try to get it even, it sucks. I don't like doing this, but it is what it is. So you slowly crank it down and you do this by hand. Because if not, you're gonna have issues, so. This is going to be tedious. I'm gonna speed it up with some music here eventually. Um, it's just, this is gonna be very time consuming, guys.
the intake side, I think I said exhaust there earlier, the intake side is completely tightened out, right? Still needs to be torqued. Now we're gonna go over to the exhaust side and repeat that process, and then I'll get on my torque wrench, I'll give you guys the exact specification what it needs to be, and then we'll start doing some of the clearances. Um, yeah, so let's start, let's go ahead and do that. All right guys, so now I'm gonna to torque each one of these. There is a pattern for it, but I just need them torqued down. Uh, so I'm gonna go corner to corner and do it like that. There's another one you can start from the center out, so it depends what you wanna do. So you can go corner to corner, center out, whatever, but they need to be the 14 foot pounds or 20 Newton meters. I set this up to 20 Newton meters, so. Twenty. There we go, do this one next. 20, 20. And again, some people just crank these down. When it comes to this stuff, man, I just don't feel comfortable doing that. Again, these bolts are already oiled up too, guys, so it makes it a lot easier. There we go, guys, so this is tightened up now. Uh, now what we gotta do is check for the clearance. I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. Again, I have another video already on this, but let's go over it again, show you guys what to do. And uh, after this then, order the buckets, do this all again, which sucks, and uh, be good to go. Getting that much closer to starting this thing up. Let's go, guys. Now, next up, I gotta put my cam gear and the bolt on. The reason I do this is I don't like to bottom these bolts out, so uh, putting my cam gear and the bolt had these uh, Cerakoted by a company here in town. Uh, this is a BC, which is an ARP stud. It's ARP 3000. Again, these aren't really necessary, but it does look cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and install these here too. It's on the front side of the engine, so y'all can't really see it, but it does look freaking awesome. Just gonna do that, bloop. And then put the bolt in, should thread right in. There we go. I just like, I love the way these look. God, this is just so cool looking in my eyes. Yes, that allows me now to spin these around so we can test for the measurements, which I'm gonna show you guys now how to do that. All right, now we're just gonna do the intake side first. I recommend taking your piece of paper that you had earlier and writing a new section. So you're gonna do intake and exhaust side. You're gonna check every one of these three times just to be safe because every time you might get a different you know, spec on it. Three times, not once, not twice, three times. I don't care what you're doing, check it three times. So I'm gonna rip this piece off, make another exhaust and intake side, and I'm gonna make a spot for one, two, three, one, two, three for each one. There's a total of 12, of course. But yeah, you get my point here. So I'm gonna rip this off real quick, make a new sheet, and then we're gonna start checking these. I've got my shims here. I take it off these little, I take it off the darn uh, uh, little piece. Oh, I don't know what it's called as I drop the paperwork there. That holds it all together just because I like it. I think it's easier to physically get it down there, bend it in if I need to. It's all in order and it's numbered, but yeah, so 
I'm gonna shut up, break down the piece of paper here and start, you know, checking the clearances. All right guys, so got my 19 millimeter on here. Again, this is specific to the ARP there. Um, what we're gonna do is check the backside. So right now, see how this lobe is up? You'd want it like that. So it wouldn't go straight up and down. See how it's coming out this way? That give you a perfect clearance to actually check the backside. Cause we're trying to check when it's not pressing down on the valve, how much clearance we have. So each side has its own clearance, which I specified there earlier. So we're gonna check these now and see what they are and then adjust them to what we truly want them to be because we're gonna be putting shimless buckets in this. So let's check this one here first. So we're gonna check these two here uh, from the backside again. It should be at an angle. So if you're looking at straight up and down, let's do it like this. See how if I look at it straight up and down, see how it's kind of angled out? It's because your backside, you're obviously your, your bucket there, it doesn't sit flat with this. It kind of angles out too, like my hand is right now. So again, that's what it should look like. And we'll put the camera back up and let's check the shims. You can tell what this is, so we'll check number three first here. So let's do that. That one's already set up, so let's take a look. Here's a five, five clears, so that's good. I'm hoping that five doesn't ever have an issue on any of this, but let's take a look through. Six clears, well, that's good. Seven clears. I need like a little table right here beside me. Here is nine, nine fits. I think 10 is gonna be tight, we'll see. 10, 10 works. Let's try 11. 11 fits, try 12, Ooh, 12 is where she gets, she gets tight on 12, see if I can get a 13 again, check every size, so 13, 13 goes, all right, if it fits, it ships, 14, 14 does not fit, so number three there is 13 millimeters, or 13 thou. I wanted to show you guys in the book too how it would look. So one, two, three, four, came down to number three, intake side 0.013 is what it would look like. So that's what I was able to get there again. Now to get this perfect, I believe the intake side needs to be eight thou. Let me double check that real quick before I say that again. So this side, the intake side is eight, the exhaust side's 10. So we're at 13 thou, we're five thou off of perfection. You have two thou clearance or tolerance, I should say. So you can go up to 10, down to six. But in this case, since we're getting shitless buckets, we're gonna shoot for perfection. So we need to come down three thou to get to our 10 thou. So we'll then measure off the buckets, which again, I'll show you here. So that's just how you guys go about. I'm gonna show one more and then I'm not gonna show the rest or maybe I'll do a time lapse, but it's just very time consuming to show all that. But that's one, so let's do one more here. So that one was 13 thou. Let's go ahead and skip up so I don't waste a bunch of time. Let's try 12. 12 fits and she's tight. And 13 thou does not go. So again, 13 thou does not go. Nope. Let's see that 12 again on this. 13 thou does fit. So 12 on number four there. So, so the last one was 13. Now we are down to uh, 12 thou on that one. And again, guys, it's that simple. We just write it down again. We'll check it all again. As we spin it around, we'll have to check it not once, not twice, but three times. So what I just did there, after I check all the other ones, I'll then repeat that process, check these again. And I know it's time consuming. This is where I said in the beginning, unlike a, like if you had an LS or if you had almost any other car where you can actually adjust it right from the top from a bolt, it's, it's very, very nice to do but they have a lot more failures. I mean, in a 2JZ world, we just, it, knock on wood, we just don't have failures in our heads. It just doesn't happen, realistically. Besides lifting the head, and even that doesn't happen very often, we just don't have those problems. So it does suck to set up, but it's one of those things, once you set it up, you just don't, I mean, I don't, I don't just never think of anything. I just don't think about it. So I'll shut up now. Um, repeat that process against both of those there. And then after this, we're gonna then go over um, checking those clearances and adding it up to say, hey, that bucket was X, Y, Z. Now the bucket needs to be this to order our shimless buckets. Cause I want to show you guys all that in one single video. So I'll shut up now. I'm going to do this. And then we'll get back to the actually measuring and show you the bucket clearances. Okay, guys, I have got everything tightened up. I've shimmed it. I've checked it not once, not twice, but three times. I did two there. Now I got three, three times, right? So went through this, not once, but twice, but three times. Um, kept checking and checking and checking it, right? So good to go. I'm gonna then take all the numbers I have because some of them are off. So you take the best of three, calculate them together, be like, all right, that's what it is. And that's what gives you your best number. So if you got two that come together, like, all right, that's obviously what it is. If the first one or the second one was off, because the first time you check and the third time you check is on point, then that's the one you go with. So, and you're, they're gonna be small, like you're gonna be a thou off. 
right? If you're like three or fourth thou off, you check it again and go, what the hell is wrong? Like what, what caused it to be that severely off? You need to do it a fourth time. I know it sounds crazy, but you do. Like this is too pertinent, this is too important, too important to not do that. So um, yeah, I'm pretty much done right now. Uh, I'm gonna do the math here for you guys and explain that and uh, kind of leave it like this for now because there's no point in taking it apart until I get the new stuff because I don't really have anywhere to put it. So until I get the new stuff, I'm kind of just gonna leave it like this. Then I'll put the new buckets in, put the cams back in, tighten it all back up, twerk it back down and be like, hey, is this good? If it is, then we'll let her eat. Again, this is the downside of a 2JZ and a, a, a flat tappet design, a you know cam on bucket design versus like I said, like a push rod engine or anything that has a uh, lifter style. It's just a lot easier to adjust those versus this setup. But for me, it's just, I'm okay with doing this. This does suck, but I'm okay with doing this because when I know when it's said and done, I don't have to worry about it anymore. So shut up now. I'm going to show you the math that you need to do. All right, guys. So here's my paperwork all laid out. So here's the first time I took my first lash measurements, the second time, and then the third time. And then out of these three, you, uh, you calculate it up. Uh, when it came to like the first one here on the exhaust side, you could see across all three, it was always the same, but some of the other ones were not. So there's 15 was, 12 was there, 10, some of them weren't. Which ones weren't? Not all of them were. So like right here, we had a discrepancy of 15 thou, then went to 14 thou, and then stayed 14 thou. So we're gonna make it 14 thou, not 15 thou. That makes sense. So that's the kind of thing, the reason you check it three times. And you're probably saying, well, Ryan, a lot of them are consistent, but it's not worth taking that chance in my eyes. So do it three times. Then you take of those three, you take the best, and you put them onto one sheet. So this is your final total of the one, two, three, of the first three. So we're gonna take these now, move these off the side. We no longer need this. So then it comes up to your finals, okay? So this is what your final measurements were, your best measurements for your lash, and this is your actual physical thickness of your bucket. And what you're doing then is doing the math between these to figure out which size you need. So here's a prime example. So for exhaust one was 208. And I'm gonna explain what the blue pen is here in a second then. So it's 0 0.208, okay? So if you look up here though, when I originally measured it, we had 210, but the bucket or the lash I got was 08. And you're probably thinking, well, Ryan, you need to add then to get up to 10. It's the opposite of that. You need to remove material because this is too tight. We need to get to 10,000 means we need that extra 2,000ths of room. We have 2,000 too tight of tolerance. Technically that's within spec right now. You're allowed one to two or 2,000 of tolerance, but if we're ordering buckets, we wanna get it close to 100% as possible. So what you'll do here is you'll take 2,000 out, which then gives you your 208, so 0 0.208. Next example. So the next one is a good example of the opposite of a first one. Now we have um, material we need to add. So it seems like a higher number, right? You have 15 thou, but realistically we have material that we need more of because we have too big of a gap. So this 203 here, 0 0.203 and the 15 thou, we need to get to 10 here. So we need to add 5 thou. So if we come down here, we had 203, right? So we got to add 5 thou, which brings us to 0 0.208 from our 0.203. Does that make sense, guys? I'm trying to make this as basic as possible. Let's do it one more time here. Three times a charm, right? So the next one is 12 thou, and right now we have 208. So we're two thou off. We need to make it a little bit tighter here. So we're gonna go from 208 down here, we're gonna make it 210. So we're gonna add 208, we're adding two thou to it, which brings us to our 210. Okay, now, once you do that across the board, get it all set up. Now you could do this in millimeters to begin with, but what I did is I did it all in SAE, all in inches, sorry, and then I converted it. So I took 208 and then converted it to millimeter. So 208.208 in millimeters, 5.28, and so on and so forth. So 0 0.210 is 5.33. And the reason for that is when you go to order these buckets, they come in metric sizes. I think the book, the US book shows it, um, in US and in metric, but the shimless buckets, I couldn't find anything that was in inches. So um, there's a tolerance range again there, guys. So what you'll do is you'll base it off these metric conversions then, and then round up to what you need. And you're probably asking, why do I need to round up or down? So the bucket sizes come in um, odd, or sorry, even numbers. So none of them are odd. So if we have something like this, it's 533, you need to round up 534 or round down 532. So that's where you need to make that decision. In most cases, I always round down, give myself more clearance because usually things get a little bit tighter over time, heat cycles, things move around a little bit. So I like to give myself more room than not enough, um, especially because we have a shimless bucket, so we don't have to worry about spitting shims. So that's what you guys need to do. I mean, that's pretty much the gist of it. Let me actually show you one more thing. Let me go to my spreadsheet and show you guys that.
So I just wanted to bring you guys inside. Again, this shows a little bit cleaner, nicer. And I make this for myself so I know in the future what I did and where I placed them at and the part numbers I use. So I made this little spreadsheet here showing the valve numbers one through 12 for both intake and the exhaust side. So you can see that there's a part number. This is the Toyota part number I need specifically for the size bucket I'll need. So in this case, we have the 5.28. 5.28533. The 533 here, sorry, my, every time I put my finger up, it's uh, automatically <laughs> trying to focus, but you see I had to round down. If you go to look through the bucket sizes, they are in um, even numbers, so no odd numbers. So you have to round down or up, it's up to you. I round down. So 535 made 534, so on and so forth. Again, I thought this would be a little bit cleaner and easier for you guys to see and understand. Uh, I'm a spreadsheet guy, so I really like this. Sorry, it's probably distorting it, but there you go. That is the basics, guys. If you, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I just don't know what to tell you. I hope this really helps. Again, I left inch and millimeter. You really don't need the inch, but I figure if I'm doing all this work, let's make both categories there and I wanted the part number. So I think this turned out well and I hope this truly helped you guys. Again, guys, I hope this video helps. Um, I kind of enjoyed making this. It takes me a long time to do these kind of videos. So that is it. Again, I can make another video then reinstalling everything, rechecking everything. Um, you know, I was talking to Tom, you know, it's amazing how much temperature can change your tolerances. He's like, you know, during their testing, they try to keep everything at 68 degrees. When shimming it, uh, shimming everything up, they said like, you know, from 68 to 75, there is a big difference in temperature and big difference in how, you know, how the metal uh, swells and stuff. They've seen a thou to a thou and a half difference in. So that's just something you guys need to know. Um, yeah, again, thank you guys very much for tuning in today and I'll talk to you later. Peace.